Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon, family. It's your DC dude. It's your DC dude. It's your DC dude. It's your DC dude. <laughs> and I was like, this is a side street, We're man. We have to go on a road trip. Let's roll. Good job. Okay, family. Let's do this. Lock and load. Buckle up. So that's easy enough, right? Before we go, does anybody got to take care of anything before we go? Wherever you want that DC dude to show up, is DC affordable to leave? What neighborhood would you want to see? Hit me with a comment below and we'll make that happen. So you could be right there wherever we end up next. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's no bathroom breaks on this trip. I'm just, I'm just saying. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to a DC dude YouTube um, show. Uh, and you may not, you may be a little confused. Uh, I am not the DC dude. I'm a friend of the DC dude. My name is Jude. I'm a tour guide here in Washington, DC. Uh, to my right is the man, DC dude. Also, his real name is Craig Bell. And um, here to talk to Craig, I got to know Craig uh, over the last couple of years. We both worked for a tour company in Washington, DC. We visited the, many of the monuments and, and memorials in DC. We struck up a friendship and we found out that we had a lot of common interests. We, we really loved history, um, and we love to share that history with other people. I'm from New Jersey originally, so I'm a transplant here, but Craig grew up in D.C., and uh, I thought it might be fun to uh, learn a little bit more about Craig's background, and it turns out he has a real passion for history and for sharing that history with people, and in particular, as you'll find out, He's very interested in what's happening on the east side of the Anacostia River, the southeast. And um, you, I think you'll learn there's a shirt. Um, Just always, happened to have his on today. <laughs> I've always got a, a general knowledge of all of D.C. He really has a passion about the southeast and the Anacostia area. And um, we'll learn more about that as we talk. So anyway, I convinced him. We talked about it. Uh, he didn't find me about too much about it, but I thought it might be nice for <laughs> for his viewers to learn more about his background. As you know, Craig has uh, put out about uh, 14, has, he has um, produced about 14 YouTube videos, so if you have not seen all 14, I recommend you check them out. And um, he's gonna be uh, producing more. Um, Every Monday and Thursday, 12 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Now, in addition to his YouTube video, which, as he said, He's going to be uh, producing them every Monday and Thursday. Thursdays yeah. at two o'clock, twelve uh, o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I really admired about Craig and why, why I wanted to give this a shot and talk with him is, in addition to doing the YouTube videos, he also uh, set up his own blog, and it is called um, Off the Beaten Path. Yeah, without DC. without the the, it's just Off Beaten Path DC. Off the Beaten Path DC, mm -hmm. and um, he's been writing it since June 2019. And uh, we're gonna talk about that too, because not many people will go to that uh, step, that extra step of actually setting up a blog, uh, being uh, disciplined enough to write articles and to get uh, feedback from people and to share share knowledge with people. So I really admire what Craig's done, done with that and I just wanna uh, give you a little, bit, a little bit of background about that too. So. I want to start, I guess, from the beginning. Craig is almost uh, uh, born here. You said you, yeah, you, you were you lived here all your life except for two years. Yeah. So if you could just give us a little background about your connection to D.C. I always struggle with this part because <laughs> I want to say so bad I was born and raised in D.C. And the truth of it is I was not. I was born in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, my dad. Um, was in the Navy at the time. My father was actually born in D.C. and he grew up in the Deanwood neighborhood. Anybody know the 48th and Mead Street area where there's a school now, used to be his house. His father was born in D.C. and uh, his grandfather came to D.C. in 1898 uh, for a government job, for a, a job at a government printed office for 25 cents an hour, big money. So he moved his whole family here for 25 cents an hour. Uh, yeah. Where did your grandfather live before D.C.? Uh, so he lived in Athens, Ohio. Athens, Ohio? Yeah, okay. Athens, Ohio. So uh, uh, with that said, um, 
I want so bad to be a, a Washington born person, but, but my father was finishing his last two years in the, in the Navy at, in Portsmouth, uh, uh, Portsmouth, Virginia, and I was born in their Navy hospital. Hmm. Uh, so that's? Yeah, so that's, that's okay. that. So you started being a citizen of D.C. when you were about two years old. Yeah, two years old, two years old. My first neighborhood I lived in was uh, east of the river. Like, uh, I grew up east of the river, basically. Yeah. What branch of the military was your dad? Uh, he was Navy. Navy. Father Navy. Navy. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you have any siblings, brothers or sisters? I do. I do. I have uh, two two siblings, two sisters, and but that's uh, probably the first reason, you know, because of family. So, so my dad, like I said, he was born and raised here, and he has a, a, a brother and a sister, and each one of them, all of them, have three kids each. So that that family union that we had was super close, you know. Uh, you know, Christmas was at our house, uh, uh, Thanksgiving at my aunt's house, 4th of July at my aunt's house, and Easter over my uncle's house. And that was every year for all my lifetime. And then, um, so that that connection with family in, in D.C. Uh, it just kind of like, um, I don't know, created a passion for me. And then, and then, and then, and then we have friends too, so. When, when, I, when I think of Washington, D.C., I, <laughs> I think a lot of the high schools. I'm a big sports fan. I know there's, some great, there's been some great athletes that played. Oh, Maybe yeah. you were one of them, correct? No, I actually uh, was um, not. Um, I know the high schools are really, have a lot of history here in D.C. Maybe just tell a little bit about growing up in D.C., what, was that, what that was like and where you went to school. Okay, uh, so I went to school in my neighborhood school. Uh, the neighborhood I was living at the time was um, uh, anybody know uh, uh, the neighborhood that we uh, uh, nicknamed um, Simple City? So there's a Davis school right there. I, I, I lived right in front of the Davis school, on the other side of school, on the other side of the school from Simple City, where where the houses were, like two blocks up. So I went to Davis school for preschool, and we used to have these schools in the parking lot. Remember preschool where they had like it was like a almost like mobile homes <laughs> in the parking lot. So I went there, and then we moved over by Kelly Miller in Northeast on the other side of East Capitol Street, and uh, by Shrimp Boat area, like I said, by, by Kelly Miller Junior High, and I went to Smothers for one year. Um, along the way, my dad uh, put us all in Catholic school, so we all went to St. Francis over in, um, also in Southeast, um, close to the Anacostia area. Um, so th back then that was a thing, like, you know, Catholic schools were a thing in D.C. You know, we, you know, people, we, you know, if you're from D.C., you know, you had St. Francis, you had St. Thomas More, you had uh, all those kind of schools. And I went on to go to McNamara for two years and um, then McKinley Tech. Came out, of, came out of McNamara and went to D.C. public schools for my last two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in high school, you said earlier you played some sports? Yeah, I played. I played uh, freshman football with McNamara. Why are you asking me embarrassing questions? Because I, you know, I played freshman. You know, <laughs> I played freshman football with McNamara for one year, and, and and that was that. And then I played uh, for St. Francis basketball for one year. Okay. And um, your neighborhood. What was what was it like growing oh, up man. in that it section was of like, DC? It, it. That's what I tell people. Like we have tourists, and, and sometimes they they say. You know we're downtown, and they're like, "Well, where's your where's your grocery stores? What are you where y'all go to grocery?" Because they they just see the White House, the monument, the memorials, and all those kind of things, and they think that it is DC. Well, you know DC has like 131 neighborhoods, and 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 the neighborhoods for me was like I said, family is my it gives me my passion for DC. Well, friends do too, because growing up there, man, we used to. Um, Take advantage of our alley and, and play everything from baseball to dodgeball to kickball to to setting up bike ramps with wood and, and, and old tires to make bike ramps and jumping and you know who could do the most tires. I mean, hide and go seek and and you know at, at night. I mean, just so much fun growing up. Um, you know, you got your troubles and you got your fights, but there wasn't a lot of talk of guns or anything like that. I mean. Um, yeah, so so I, that's that's what that's why I'm deeply rooted in, 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 in this city because I just love that experience that I had. That, that sounds like some neat, neat memories. Great yeah, way man. to grow up. High school ends. What happened? Oh, an to ice you? cream truck. Remember the ice cream trucks? <laughs> <laughs> that was a big deal. The good human truck. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's right. We, got, <laughs> we had those in New Jersey too. Yeah, was, yeah, exactly. I was a big so, fan. Is there some particular incident or event that triggered your your interest now? In history, did this happen 
did this just start up of three years ago, or have you, like, did you enjoy history back in high school? Uh, Interesting. Yeah, so, um, hmm. It's like, most of my life, I mean, I, I have friends that'll tell you, me talking about writing a book. I've been talking about writing a book maybe for 20 plus years, you know, and the reason why I wanted to write a book is because I always wanted to, um, I always wanted to look at why people consider East of the River. East of the River is Washington, D.C. too, <laughs> you know, because it was always kind of treated like it wasn't, you know, always. Um, for example, my dad growing up in Deanwood, anybody who knows the history of Deanwood, people had to fend for themselves. They didn't get any kind of like, government assistance. It was kind of like they were out there by themselves. So in Deanwood, we, they built their own schools, they built their own churches, they, um, uh, they, had, they even had people with, you know, uh, entrepreneurs back then in the neighborhood would start their own bus companies because we didn't have bus service. So there were so many negative things uh, uh, that the media, and then growing up, you know, it's like um, people come to visit D.C. and they're warned specifically to not go east of the river. And you definitely don't want to live there. So I've always, that, that's always kind of been my motivation to, um, to express the good times. I mean, growing up next to Fort DuPont Park, we used to ride our bikes through the trail. And it was just, we just had good experiences. It wasn't all good experiences, you know. It was it was kind of like you know um, you're gonna have your trouble with neighbor other, other other neighborhoods and you know you got little things growing on but it, like I said it was my memories are good so that's where my passion came from but but it, it didn't stop at East of the River because I just love DC period like I I'm proud to say that I'm from Washington DC and and I think the YouTube channel is necessary because I think people need to um, be exposed to the quick changes because the changes are happening. Overnight, like it looks different yes today than it did yesterday, and tomorrow it's going to look even more different. Mm -hmm. If you go away for one year or two, you won't recognize the place. So I, I think that it's important that um, somebody documents it, and, and, and so I asked that DC dude to do it. <laughs> you know, and Craig, you said you you haven't written a book, but um, I looked at your blog posts, and I mentioned earlier you started blogging back in June of 2019. And I think if you link together all these blog posts of yours, you might have a book. Uh, I recommend to everyone that you take a look at uh, Craig's uh, blog. He's got it. He's got a summary of the categories he covered. He's covered things, subjects such as bridges, cemeteries, historic sites, hospitals, movie theaters, neighborhoods, restaurants, schools. Uh, you know all the wow, basics of a life. community, all the basics of a what it's like to, to live in a in a in a section of a city, uh, and I'm still in the process of reading all that. And, and some, there's some great <laughs> you stuff. You have to read stuff. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's some great, great I just stuff. Have writing it. From a from someone who lived there and grew up there and is still, uh, you know, like he said, he's trying to make sure everyone knows has to knows a real story behind what it's like to live there. There's a lot of things said that are not true, that people didn't live there, so they really don't have the inside scoop. And if anybody has the inside scoop, I think it's this guy, uh, Craig. Yeah, you'd be surprised doing Uber. I would have a lot of people who had just moved here or didn't really know the city, and they would think that it's like DC's transient city, like DC transient city. They don't realize like all the neighborhoods that surround like Maine, DC, or what people like to call DC proper, is full of people who have been here for generations. That's my experience, and that's, that's the experience that I, I want to share. Oh. Now I'm, I'm looking at the clock here, okay. And we, we, Craig and I talked that no one talked before, and we figured no one really would want to listen to us more than 15 minutes. <laughs> That's right. And we hit about the 15 minute. I'm, I'm gonna do uh, some cutting too, so 15 minute spot. Three. One thing I didn't say at the beginning was, um, it is we're we're doing this uh, conversation on Monday, November 9th. It's a beautiful day around three o'clock in the afternoon. Man. We're seated at a picnic table uh, at Rock Creek Park. His idea was awesome. A particular section of Rock Creek Park, a national park site called Pierce Mill, an old flour mill. And it really is a beautiful little spot uh, right off of Beach Drive, and recommend you check it out sometime. But uh, with that, Craig, uh, we'll... I appreciate we you, We will uh, uh, stop the interview right now. And, okay. And um, it's been a pleasure learning a little bit. Hey, we, we got to do this now. Anyway, yeah. bye, family. And um, if you want to ride, just click on subscribe. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Jocko for me, watching the time. Whoa.